There is encouraging news in the race to develop a coronavirus vaccine. The first vaccine tested in this country is set to begin its final phase of testing later this month. Moderna published its phase one results in a peer review journal. All 45 volunteers who received this vaccine produced an immune response and showed no serious safety concerns. The vaccine was developed with the National Institutes of Health. Our Dr. David Eggers joins us now to discuss that story. David, good morning to you. It sure sounds promising, is it? Yeah, this is the first U.S. Uh, uh, trial. It is a phase one. It is very small, 45. You know, by comparison, the Oxford vaccine is in 14,000 patients, so very different than the 45 here. But what they showed in the New England Journal of Medicine is very good antibody responses and some T-cell responses. So they're mimicking what happens when you have the virus with a little bit stronger antibody responses. So it's about as good as we could hope for from a phase one clinical trial. And now we go to the pivot it'll study. Mm -hmm. So what do we, before we talk about that, what do we know about the safety and what do we know about the side effects of this drug? You always have to ask about those things. So what we know is yeah. that it was remarkably yeah. well tolerated. About half of the patients had fever, chills, sore arm, what you expect from a vaccine. Nobody had a serious adverse event. So well tolerated. There were three doses. The middle dose seemed to have an optimal immune response. And when you went to a higher dose, more side effects without more of an immune response. So they're going forward with the middle dose in the phase three clinical trial. So phase three, you talk about that as the, the pivotal phase. What happens in that trial? So in the phase three trial, we give half the volunteers placebo and half the volunteers vaccine. And then we say, go into the world and you know, do your normal behavior and we'll see if this protects people from the virus. So what's incumbent there is that it has to go into areas that we predict will have high numbers of cases of the virus. If we inject people in part of the country where the virus goes away, the result isn't gonna yield information. The way this phase three is designed with 30,000 patients, the hope is we receive data by Thanksgiving. And again, that presupposes that we can predict where there are going to be outbreaks in the country because that's where we'll do most of the vaccination. Yeah, a lot of people thinking about Thanksgiving or rethinking Thanksgiving plans. When you were here the other day, we talked about the antibody levels in patients declining after some time, after they, after they recover. How will this affect the vaccine development? It's the key question, is that everybody is focused on antibody levels. Data has come out in two separate studies showing that after two or three months, people who got the virus, the vaccine, the antibody levels went down, and that was worrisome. What's critical here is T cells. T cells are the other part of the immune system that are very potent in fighting the virus and have memory. The Moderna vaccine showed that it actually did turn on T cells. How much and how long is the critical question? We don't know because we only have the short term data from this phase one study. And so what we're hoping and praying for is that it will be long acting and there will be long term immunity. We know antibodies on everything, right? If, if they go away in two or three months, we haven't yet seen secondary infections. That is somebody getting the virus twice in this country. So clearly T cells are a big part. So, David, what still could go wrong here? We're so optimistic, want the vaccine. What still could go wrong? So, you mean, what keeps me up at night? What keeps me up at night is really <laughs> okay. three separate things. One is, um, we don't yet have a test for immunity. So when we give a vaccine, I wanna know how long Gail is protected and when she's going to need a booster. And if I don't have a test for that immunity, I'm not sure when I'm going to give it to her. Second is, is that while we have these good immune responses seen in the phase one, are they enough to block the virus from causing its problem? The FDA has set a bar that unless you uh, reduce symptoms by 50%, they're not gonna approve the vaccine. So we have a bar, which I think is fantastic that they set that, we have to get there. The third, and I think really critical, is that we don't politicize this vaccine. If the data on some of the mm -hmm. vaccines, and they will be out on the Oxford vaccine early, come out end of September, beginning of October, it, I, I'm afraid will be politicized and people will be afraid to get the vaccine because they think it's politics, not science. Science has yeah. to win here. Yeah. Yes, who would have thought mask would become a political hot potato? But say you get COVID, let's say, forget about the vaccine for a second. Say you get COVID and you're, you're, you've recovered. Can you get reinfected again? 
at some point the answer will be yes. In the United States now, we don't have a documented case of somebody reinfected with COVID-19. At some point, immunity will run out and we will see significant numbers of people with secondary infections. And sometimes they can be more serious than the first, which is what has us worried. So we're waiting, we're on guard and we're looking, but we have yet to see that wave, if you will, in the United States. All right, David Agus, thank you very much. Always good to see you.